Well, good morning, everybody. Morning. Hope everyone's doing well this morning. Still got a few uh, trickling in here, but the lights flickered a couple minutes ago, and I guess I better get started. I've waited as long as I can. Um, before we get started, uh, if you would, let's let's take a moment and just prepare our minds and our heads in a word of prayer. Dear Most Gracious Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so very much for another day of life that you've given us, another opportunity to gather here as friends and brothers and sisters to open up your word. We pray, dear Lord, as we examine your scriptures that we are growing, that we are gaining knowledge, that we are sharing experiences that help us in our walks of, of everyday life. And dear Lord, that Everything we do glorifies you, brings us closer to you, dear Lord, and, and also brings us closer to each other um, so that we can continue to rely on and lean on each other for, for help along the way. Thank you for your son and everything he did for us, the life that he gave for us, that we are even able to be here today. We love you. We thank you. It's in, in his name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> So for those of you uh, visiting, uh, we welcome you. Uh, I'm not the, the, the normal scheduled class teacher. I'm filling in today uh, for Brother Jonathan Absher, but um, hopefully the rest of the class will help me get through this. Um, I, I love opportunities to teach and preach. I, it, it helps me grow, and so I, I appreciate this. And some of you have had to put up with that before, Carol. Um, she likes to give me a hard time, but I appreciate that. I like to give her a hard time, so I look forward to that. <laughs> we have been uh, we have been looking at First and Second Timothy, and this class today will be in Second Timothy and um, chapter two. And this is kind of just a continuum, if you will, of, of Paul's encouragement to uh, to Timothy. We're going to see some some things that have already kind of been said and and. Also, some things that, that add to what have already been said that will, continue, will, will encourage Timothy and educate him. Um, some really beautiful stuff through Timothy, so I look forward to, to getting through this. We're going to kind of look at these, and, and this is just a walkthrough, really, guys, of, of, of the book. Um, we'll probably just look at them at, at roughly about a couple verses at a time. That's kind of how, how I have my notes broken down. So hopefully we can just go through these and... and uh, Share some thoughts on these verses. So to launch off, I'm just going to read verses 1 and 2 of 2 Timothy chapter 2 here, and then discuss a couple things. You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Uh, in, in a previous uh, quarter, Brother, Brother Sam was teaching a class, and, and we talked about this, this phrase, and some, some translations might say, uh, therefore, we see therefore a lot uh, in these writings. Here we see you then, um, and this is always uh, something that stuck out to me, and I told Sam this. My dad used to say this all the time. It drove me crazy at the time, but now as I, as I consider it, it's interesting to think about why why is or what is the therefore therefore why why is that written in scripture well it's pointing us back to what has previously been said so therefore or you then because of what i have just told you then then we're going to move forward with what what he's wanting to explain again so you then follow or my child when we think about the phrase uh my child um why do you think Paul would be calling Timothy my child. Either a closeness, or it could be uh, he's helped to kind of raise him up in the faith. Yep. Or, uh, just simply, he just he, he's younger and they have a special bond. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and some of us parents, I mean, we'll, we'll talk to other parents' kids and we'll be like, hey, child, you know, uh, and that's just a, a you know, just an expression. Here, I think I think Sam alludes to something a little bit more important. I mean, this is, in my mind, we, we would like to see that a child imitates a godly father. 
imitates a godly example. Um, so, and we're going to see that from, from Paul regardless, but I'd, I'd like to think that when he says, my child, that's kind of an, uh, an indicator of, look, look to my example here, and look to your father's example, my child. My son, okay, my son. We're having reference back to first, the second Timothy chapter one, verse two, where he starts this off to Timothy, my, my dearly beloved. My, yes. Just this affinity that have for each other. Yes, yes, and that that closeness that is there, and that love that is there. Um, this is this is just a bringing in of of love and encouragement. So, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. who are Christian, but I understand that Timothy's dad was Greek, so maybe Paul is fulfilling this role as a teaching father. Very possible. Yeah, very possible. That's a good point. Thank you. So, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus and what you've heard from me in the presence of many witnesses. Um, so we... We know that the referencing back to chapter one, uh, Paul is is explaining to Timothy about about his example, the life that he's been living in service to God, some of the things he's encountered in service to God. Um, so I'd like to think that when he's in reference to that, you then, my child, follow my example, and maybe even including that example of Onesiphorus that he just mentioned a few uh, verses previous to chapter two. But also in that is not just not just follow my example of of what I've done for Christ, but but shun the example, put away the example of those that forsook me, those that that left the truth. Um, you know, keep this in the full picture. I mean, we had some who who have been leaving, and we're going to see that in chapter two again. Some who have erred from the truth. So what are we to do with their example? Well, we shouldn't follow that. So. If you're going to be looking to me, for example, if you're going to be looking to your godly father, for example, then we got to put these things aside and not be associated with those things. Unless we're, we're correcting those things. And we're going to see that as well. Um, and then be, be strengthened, he says. This is invested with power. Have it and show it. Be confident in Christ. So this is the power that... That Paul, I think, is really wanting to send home here with Timothy is is don't be we've we are we've already seen don't be ashamed of this, be empowered by it. This is something that is good to live in and be an example of. And then in verse two, when it says, "And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, who are the many witnesses?" Is this somebody specific? Is this one specific event? Is this many events? What do you think? Yep. Yep. And Timothy's been looking several different other places. Yeah, there. I mean, there's a, a lot of witnesses yeah. out there. Yeah. Um, I did read the, in a few uh, few different commentaries. Reading through those, one commentary had had mentioned that they thought this was the witnesses that would have been on the, on the road during Paul's you know conversion, and that, and that's that's true. They are witnesses, but there are many witnesses too. I mean, there's there's witnesses all throughout. Paul's journey here. Any other comments on that? Okay. Um, I lost my notes here. Okay. And then share in suffering. This, um, no, that's in verse three. I'm getting too far ahead there. Back up to verse two. Okay. So entrust this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. When you think about entrusting something to someone, what are you hoping is happening with that which you are entrusting? It's built within the word. That it will be spread. Okay. Well, in this case, that it's going to be spread. But not just, you know, it's, it's kind of specifying what kind of people you're giving this to, right? Um, you know, who do, we, who do we often, or where do we often put our money? Well, we would put it in a bank. We entrust it to this bank, this vault. It's going to protect our money. Well, this is it's kind of the similar concept here. We're giving this to, to some vaults of men, men who are can be trusted to protect this truth 
and then take that truth and go and teach it. You know, we're, we're going to see this as well uh, in a few verses later. Spoiler alert if you haven't read it. But, you know, Paul's going to get to a, a point where he's literally saying, you know, I'm bound by these chains. But there's also a side point to that. Even though I am bound by these chains, there's one thing that is not bound. And that is the word of God. And it is because we have entrusted it to others to go and teach it. So it's a, it's a beautiful thing that we're, that we're going to be building up to. Anything else through verses uh, 1 and 2? Just, just to make a, a point, I mean, just, just to stress the point, the importance of what you said about Paul calling Timothy his brother, even in, or his son. And Titus does the same thing. We'll get to that eventually. Uh, in verse, chapter 1, verse 4, Titus, my own son, after the, after the common faith. It seems like Paul is just really running with this idea that, that Jesus started way back when in Matthew chapter 12. His, his, his mother and his brother come to see Jesus and could get to him because of the crowds and if somebody told Jesus, told your mother, your brother here, stand without and desire to speak with you. And Jesus answers, who is my mother and who are my brethren? He stretched forth his hand towards his disciples and said, behold my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same as my brother and sister and mother. I mean, Jesus is moving beyond this physical and the spiritual and it's this whole family of unity we spoke about Ephesians and Paul is just he's, he's trying to as you mentioned, given this this whole idea uh, to uh, Timothy, he's an entrusted, entrusted brother to continue this legacy. Mm -hmm. uh, this idea of unity. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's great. Thank you. Anything else? On passing uh, the word to uh, faithful people that are going to teach it, it's that's when that's a form of missionary work teaching one another that's how it's spread mm -hmm. one-on-one teach yep. someone they'll teach someone it grows yeah yeah we've probably all seen some of those diagrams where one line hits one point and then it spreads out to two lines those two lines spread out to four lines and then by the time you go so far down the road i mean and it doesn't take long all of a sudden you've got a million dots in this circle uh, that started from one dot and uh i think we 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 fail a lot of times to see that we can be that one dot. Um, but, it, and, and also, who has this word been entrusted to now? Us, right? How beautiful is that? I mean, the word that is once spoken from Paul directly to Timothy, that word, that beautiful trusting in you word, I mean, this is given to us now. And that's, that's, that's very beautiful. All right, let's just look at verses uh, three and four. Anybody want to read those for us? Suffer hardship with me as a good soldier of uh, Jesus Christ, of uh, Christ Jesus. A soldier in active service entangles himself in affairs of everyday life, so that himself, oh, so that he may be pleased with one who enlisted him. Okay, so share in suffering. Um, you know, if somebody comes up to you and they says, I'm, I'm going to be you know, getting you involved in something. And they say, uh, by the way, it's, it's going to be pretty painful. How after are you going to be to want to tag along with something like that? Probably at first you're going to be like, I don't think I want to be involved with that. If it's going to be painful, uh, that doesn't sound too fun. But Paul is, is literally encouraging Timothy here. Share in this suffering with me. Why in the world would somebody want to share in suffering with something? Why would they want to do it in this case? You got to know the end result. Yeah. Got to know the end result. There is a reason for this suffering, and that, that obviously the the outcome of this present momentary passing suffering is leading to something much more grand. Um, so it's yeah. There's there's a reason that he's saying sharing this suffering, and not only sharing the suffering, but by the way, you're going to be encountering suffering. He's already we've already seen that. This is just a reminder as well. Share in this suffering. Take part with me, just like a, a good soldier would. Um, and do not get entangled in civilian pursuits. What would that mean to you guys? Oh, one more time, Carol. Well, I'm sorry, what did, you, what did you say, Carol? I said stay focused on God. Stay focused on God. I'm saying everyday life stuff, so 
everyday life stuff. Yeah. Stuff that is going to pull you away from what? If you're entangled in, in something over here, you're going to be, it's going to be hard to get out, out of that, right? So don't get tangled up in the things that are not godly things. That are not going to help you grow in godly ways. All right. Um, Compare it to a soldier, a soldier dedicated to his uh, mission, and he don't have time to get involved in the city affairs and things like that. So that's what he said. It seems like you're a good soldier. Be therefore carry out the duties and so forth. Don't get yourself entangled with things that'll take you away from that mission. That's right. Yeah, and then we see that. I mean, just in that next verse four there. Um, and it even adds to that point, since his aim is to please who? Who is this soldier aiming to please? The one who enlisted him. All right, so in this case, who, who might that be referring to? Christ, Christ right? Christ, through, or through Paul's words, Christ. Very good. And I'm, I'm going to, these next probably uh, four to six verses... We're going we're gonna to go through these quickly, and then i got one kind of grand point to kind of tie them all together. Um, so let's go ahead and look at verses 5 through 7 then. 5 through 7. Anybody want to grab that for me? Also, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not win the prize unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer ought to be the first to receive his share of crops. Consider what I say. All right, so we kind of have these two comparisons uh, in verses 5 and 6. What do you think those comparisons are for, or those parallels are for? It's an athletic contest. In number 5, which says, If a man also strive for the master, but yet he is not crowned. So you go back to the, where they had the races and mm -hmm. combat. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't win. But you especially can't win. Gets the crown. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, you especially can't win if you're not following the rules, right? you got to follow the rules. And then, <coughs> likewise, in, in verse 6, who is it that should have the first share of the crops? The one, yeah, the hard worker, the one who produced the crops, right? Um... So then Paul says, you know, think over what I say. Think over what I say. And I think that's including these, these illustrations that he's given, everything previous, of course. Apply yourself to this ministry. And I read something that, that seemed like it kind of tied these thoughts in pretty good. I liked it. And it gave three points. It said, point number one, a Christian is to strive for masteries. Aim at mastering his own lust and or corruptions. Number two, but he must also strive according to the laws given to him. Strive lawfully. Point number three, those who do strive by those things shall be crowned at last after completing or after, uh, after a complete victory is obtained. So it kind of kind of looks at, in a way, summarizing these, these few verses and looking at it as this is what you should be doing with these thoughts. Strive to work toward the things you're supposed to work for, for the person you're supposed to work for, I mean. Do it in a way that is according to the law. And then if you do these things and you follow these, quote unquote, you follow these rules, you're going to be crowned. So it's a, it's a kind of a, a, good, a good capture of, of those verses. In the uh, last part there of what we read, verse 7, of course, think over what I say. For the Lord will give you understanding in everything. What kind of understanding are we, th are we talking about? This for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. What does that, what does that mean? Does it just mean what it says? Is there something specific? Is it spiritual understanding? Is it just this intellectual understanding in general? What do you think? I have a reference here back to Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6. It says, For the Lord gives wisdom. 
out of his mouth comes in all his understanding. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, I mean, but in, in general, I mean, do we guess? I mean, just, just consider what God says, and you're going to be you're going to be a little 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 wiser than than you know than the world that, that don't consider. But you will also have peace of mind. You'll have contentment. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. So looking at, again, uh, just a few commentaries on this, it was just the reason I asked that that way. There was, just a, there was a lot of interesting things written on this. Um, and, and one point I'm totally having to paraphrase here. I didn't write this one down because it was too long. But he was really just digging into how this wasn't just talking about just this, this intellectual understanding of, of everything, how the, how the world works, or maybe this concept of uh, um, maybe, maybe a bit of what, what Solomon encountered, just having vast knowledge of just all these various things, um, but really more about understanding how what is written or what is spoken through the Bible, how we're supposed to take that, apply that, and therefore grow from it. Growing in that kind of understanding, that spiritual, godly understanding. Um, And I can buy that. Uh, I really can. I mean, it's if there's any understanding we want in life, it's the understanding of how to please God, of, of how to take his words and apply it to our daily lives. So, I don't know. It's just, if you ever look into it, it's kind of interesting what, what a few people come up with, but um, it, it is, yeah, it's, it's neat. So we, we understand, or we can, we can kind of buy what understanding is, is being talked about there, and then... When we, when we look at what Paul's saying here, and he says, you know, think over what I say. The Lord's going to give you this understanding. Um, how do we, and, and I mean, this is, this is a very easy thing to think about or, or answer. How do we grow in understanding? What's the answer to that? Well, I was going to read uh, Hebrews 5, 14. It says, the strong name belongs to them that are a full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses to discern both good and evil. So by exercising ourselves and studying and understanding and learning more of God's will, we learn to, we become mature, we become mm-hmm. adults, and we, we learn how to discern the good and evil. And, and he's helped us to um, understand the uh, even some of those things in the verses that we just read in that uh, these people understood the idea of being a soldier. They understood uh, how uh, growing a vineyard worked and the things that uh, pertain to that. And just like the rules of those endeavors and those occupations, the same is true of Christians. You, you by reading and studying and learning and being taught mature in God's word to know what the rules are so far as God is concerned to be a Christian and thereby we are helped in in our understanding and ability to discern right and wrong. That's right. Yeah, that's great. And that I mean that answers that entire question. Um if we if we want to grow in this understanding, our how is to dig into the Word of God. Um, as we study the Word of God, as we grow in this knowledge, as we share that knowledge, we will be exposed, our minds will be exposed, how to discern between good and evil. And as we discern between good and evil, as we fight those temptations, as we encounter those things, we strengthen ourselves as well. Um, we, are, we are tested by fire and all that. I mean, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Thank you for that. What, what were the verses again, Ron? Uh, Hebrews 5, 14. Yeah, Hebrews 5, 14. Okay, anything else up through verse 7? Very good. Uh, my Bible reads a little different than that. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. He's not given us fear, so therefore we're courageous Mm -hmm. in doing the things that his word reveals and it includes power. They were laying hands on people in those days being able to 
almost argue that, that some have convinced themselves that they cannot have that kind of um, confidence or, or courage. I mean, the Bible obviously teaches it different. I mean, God gave you this, this courage. It's in you. Don't be afraid to use it. That doesn't mean you're not going to suffer because of it. But we know that it's in us. It shouldn't be, shouldn't be an excuse of, of fear to spread God's word. All right, verses 8 through 9. What do you think would be the significance of Paul reminding Timothy of the resurrection of Christ? Right? Remember what you're here for. I mean, this is, this is what we're here for. Remember Jesus Christ. Um, and, and I saw a great note uh, aside from this, which was suffering saints should remember to look to Jesus, to look to this sacrifice. Um, there's a reference for uh, Hebrews chapter 12. In uh, Hebrews 12 and verse 2. Where it said, looking to Jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So basically, consider this. Consider our Christ, who did what he did, went through what he went through, and now where is he at? At the right hand of God. Be confident in this. This is what suffering saints should, should remember, be reminded of, and, and consider. Um, rightly considered, this should support and strengthen those who suffer in this present life. Uh, you know, Paul says, you know, additionally, consider me, consider my suffering, uh, what I've gone through. How I was kind of thinking about this last night. This this kind of, there's kind of a twisted view out there. I mean, when you think about in general, not not just with what we know, but just in general and kind of a worldly mindset. When, when people see others suffering, what, what might enter their mind, do you think? Let's, let's, let's parallel it to Job. What did they think about Job? You must have done something. You must have done something wrong, man. If you're going through all this bad stuff, here you are talking about this God. Here you are talking about how great he is, but, man, you, you're in the dumps. You broke down. You're emotionally distraught. I mean, I just, I think a lot of times people outside looking in are just saying, you're doing it wrong. You know, I, I'm not going through these things, so obviously I'm doing it right. Paul was one who did good and yet suffered as an evildoer. This is a parallel to Christ as well. And in a way, I feel that, that Paul is saying, don't expect any less than what I've experienced. It's, it's both a warning, but also an encouragement. It's okay that you're going to be going through these things. You're going to go through these things, but I've already given you the reason why. Be thankful that this is the reason why you are suffering. Matthew Henry had a great quote, um, persecuting powers may silence ministers and restrain them, but they cannot hinder the operation of the word of God upon men's hearts and consciences. It cannot be bound by any human force. And this ties in just very well to what's leading up into verse 9 here, which we referenced earlier. For the work, uh, for the work I've done, Paul says, I am suffering, even bound with chain, but the word of God is not bound. You cannot, this cannot be bound. It is a free word. It is able to be sent, spoken, written, and circulated by others. That is the beautiful thing about God's word. And this is the encouragement 
that Paul sends to Timothy and as a reminder. That's the same encouragement that, that comes to us, by the way. I mean, every time we read these words from Paul to Timothy, I would, I would challenge us to receive these words as if they were written directly to us from Paul, which they are. But do not fear. Anything else through uh, verse 8 there? All right. Um, I had another note. Verse 9. Oh, it's later on. Okay. Pick up in verse 10 through 13. 10 through 13. <laughs> In verse 10, Paul makes this statement, you know, I endure everything for the sake of the elect. And there's kind of this idea that I am, you know, enduring through, you know, pass, passively suffering, but actively enduring. Um, and, and I think that's really interesting to think about because that is literally kind of the life that, that we go through. We are, we are passively suffering through the things we suffer actively enduring for the sake of the church, for the sake of our spiritual growth, for the sake of our eternal lives. Um, and then he says, these sayings, these next sayings are trustworthy. When we see that word, we just need to automatically go to the point, I mean, these are reliable, these are true, these are dependable, these are unfailing, trustworthy. So what are these sayings about? First of all, if we had died with him, we will also live with him. Pretty self-explanatory, but what are we talking about? Okay, putting on the new self. Putting on Christ in order that, you know, we died to sin, that we may live with him in eternity. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Now that's a pretty pretty scary thing to think about. Has anyone ever, I'm sure we have, but have y'all ever seen these, these uh, videos or clips or anything like that, read articles? Maybe it's a, maybe it's a, a satanic type group or, or just anything where someone just literally says, you know, I don't believe in, in Jesus or I don't believe in God. If you've seen those videos, I, I don't know if you feel the same thing I feel, but it's, it's just this like, pain. It just hurts to hear those words uh, when, when, when people are denying the one reason they are even able to walk on this earth. Um, but then I think they deny him here, and what are they going to hear in eternity? I do not know you. Uh, and that is also sickening. I mean, this is a soul that, that needs saved. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. I mean, that's, a, that's just beauty in and of itself right there. Wherever we are at, faithful, faithless, he is always a constant. A never changing state of faithfulness. And I think about this, and it really kind of hits when I think about how many years I've been on this earth versus how many years he has ruled the earth. And endured faithfully. Um, you know, we, we, I think it's, I, I was thinking about this as well, and I'm, it, it doesn't necessarily parallel to this directly, but I was just kind of thinking about um, uh, forgiveness in, in kind of our, our culture, if you will, our society, whatever, among each other, and how, how even among the same type sins, let's say, let's say we sin against somebody, and you know, we ask for forgiveness. I don't know, month goes by, we do the same sin, we ask for forgiveness, and, and maybe we mean it, but we keep falling back in the same sin. At some point, typically, the humanistic mind says, dude, 
I have forgiven you like three or four times already. You keep doing the same thing. I don't know if I can trust you. I don't know if I can accept this anymore. But who does accept it? Every time we sin and come back, who is ready? Who is willing? Um, he is faithful. Every time he is faithful. Uh, it, is just, it just really, really hit me. But it also says, for he cannot deny himself, which, is, which was interesting. I mean, he is and was and will always be. Um, so he, he cannot deny himself. So just another send home message from Paul here um, of encouragement to Timothy. Remember who you serve. This is who he is. Always trustworthy. Always faithful. Anything else up through uh, verse 13? Paul is showing the, uh, the conditional factor of this too. The if has free will. I mean, if, if oh, yeah, way, that's true. Yeah. If, I mean, it shows that we, if we may not be, we get not, you know. But like you said, I mean, Christ is steadfast. He, there is no conditional with him. I mean, it, it is, he is. Uh, he will be faithful, whether we are not. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really, uh, I didn't pick that up earlier. That's, that's very true. That um, tying in with that free moral agency, our, our, our choice uh, that God has given us to be able to make, um, which also implies that we choose to suffer. <laughs> that we choose to suffer for a greater, for a greater reason. It's just like Paul, just like Timothy. All right, very good. Thank you. Um, verses 14 and 15. So make it your business to edify those who are under your charge or who are under his charge in this time. Make it your business to edify them. Put them in remembrance, remembrance of these things. Paul is telling Timothy to do the same thing with these words as he is doing to Timothy. Put them in, in, in remembrance of these things just as I am doing for you right now. Um... Not to quarrel about words, which does not, which does no good. What do you guys think that is talking about? And I will tell you and admit that I spent way too much time on this race. What does that mean to you guys? Not to quarrel about words. Not to have a war of words. Yes. Because I always, I always say, less you know, the less you say, probably the better off yeah. you are. So here's why I went down a bad rabbit hole, right? Um, there is definitely, and we're going to see this, by the way, there's definitely a line where we will quarrel about words. But there's, there's words that are significant to our salvation, significant to what is truth. What is gospel truth? And then there are words which are just kind of picking and nudging just to cause a fight or a bicker or um, to distract from a message. And, and I think there's, there's both being tied in here a little bit in a way. But this is, to me, is, is, is basically don't get carried away with these conversations that are just existing just to hold you down, just to keep you from moving forward with your work. Don't quarrel over these over these words and I have probably two pages of text messages between two other people that I could tie into all this but I'm not going to do that to you guys because at the end of the day it was basically the same point um, let's see and then do your best to present yourself to God as one approved a worker who has no need to be ashamed it's kind of thinking about um, how trying to parallel this if uh you know my job is is remodeling construction and if i go into a job maybe i do a tile shower or something like that 
and I'm just there to get the job done. So I don't really plan it out. I don't really do my cuts a certain way. I just kind of plop them on the wall. Just fill in the gaps as best I can and any other gaps I leave alone because I don't have the right size tile. And I leave and I walk away. Well, for one, the owner's gonna be pretty upset. They have a mosaic wall that makes no sense. All these weird gaps. And honestly, I should be ashamed of that. I should be ashamed that my work isn't, isn't something I put my full effort into. I was lazy about it. Okay, well, a worker to present ourselves to God as one approved with no shame, there's gonna have to be some work and thought process put into that, some, some, some planning, I mean, some effort. If I want that wall to look good, I'm planning. I'm making my cuts the right way. I'm putting them in the right way. I'm gapping them and spacing them. All that is the right way so that I'm not ashamed of my work. And we do that so we can also rightly handle the word of truth. As we read, as we study, as we're putting the work in, as Ron referenced a while ago, we will be able to discern between good and evil. We will be able to rightly handle the word of truth as we put that work in. Anything else on, on uh, those two verses? That is a very popular quoted verse. We ought to know what it means, what it stands for, and how it applies to us. Hey, Sir? On the, no, 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 going back to the rest, all the regular hard but you made it. Not always about our day or what we do. Sometimes we get caught in rain water. Yeah. You could have just approached me in private after class. <laughs> I'd appreciate that. Now, I know, I, and that's right. I mean, 100%, if, if there's just babbling to, to fill in space, as Ron's saying, I mean, I think, I think we're not accurately handling, not rightly handling use of time or anything like that. It's a good point. Thank you. I'll move on. Absolutely. Awesome oh, spot. Just like that. Man. Okay. Uh, well, we'll pick up in verse 16 then on Wednesday night. This snuck up on me. Thank you guys for your comments. Thanks for helping me out with the class. <laughs>